This video is sponsored by Playbook. We'll discuss them more in detail later in the video. The number one way to invest for maximum returns. Maximize your tax advantage accounts. Whether we like it or not, we have to pay income taxes on money we take home and capital gains tax if we sell appreciated assets. That is the nature of the game. We make money, we have to pay taxes. However, there are ways to reduce this tax burden. If you have tax advantage accounts available to you, think accounts like 401k, Roth IRA, defined benefits plan, and health savings account, make sure to contribute as much as possible. Why? Because when you invest in these tax advantage accounts, your money is sheltered from the tax man. For example, when you invest in a traditional 401k, you get a tax break because your overall taxable income is lower by the amount that you contribute. Let's say you make $100,000 a year, but you decide to invest $20,000 into your 401k because you heard from some random guy on YouTube with some amazing hair that you should invest as much as possible into these tax advantage accounts. So now instead of needing to pay taxes on that full $100,000, you only need to pay taxes on $80,000. Depending on your filing status, that could save you up to $5,000 in taxes alone, more money you can invest into the market for growth, maximizing your investment returns. And how about accounts like the Roth IRA? Though you pay taxes up front, all the money that you invest in this account grows tax-free and withdraws are tax-free in retirement. Imagine you invest $7,000 this year into a Roth IRA account, the 2024 contribution limit, and you don't touch it for the next 30 years. At an 8% return, the $7,000 is now worth over $70,000. Normally, if this money was in a regular brokerage account, you would need to pay taxes on the gain when you withdraw. However, because it's in a Roth IRA account, the $63,000 in gain, you pay $0 in taxes. It's all yours. Bottom line, less money to the government translates directly to increasing returns. So make sure to use all tax advantage accounts available to you. Number two way to invest for maximum returns. Take the idea of tax advantage accounts up a notch and invest within all your different accounts tax efficiently. Even after you've maxed out all your retirement accounts, there are still strategies to decrease some tax drag. There are naturally investments that are already tax efficient. Most often, these are stocks and mutual funds that pay qualified dividends. Dividends that receive favorable tax treatment in stocks and mutual funds that avoid paying out taxable capital gains distributions. These type of distributions are typical in actively managed funds that engage in frequent trading in their portfolios. Most broad stock market index fund check both of these boxes, thus is a great example of an already tax efficient investment. The dividends it pays are modest and mostly qualified, and because the trading within the fund is minimal, so too are taxable gains distributions. On the other hand, investments that are tax inefficient or those that pay interest non-qualified dividends, and those that generate taxable capital gains distributions. Often these are individual stocks, bonds, CDs, and REITs. And because of their tax inefficiency, we would ideally like to keep them in tax advantage accounts that we talked about earlier. Think 401ks and IRAs. So if you really want to invest tax efficiently, in your ordinary brokerage account, invest only in a broad stock market index fund. It doesn't mean you have to, but if you don't have any more tax advantage accounts remaining because you maxed out all of them, it is ideal to hold them in ordinary brokerage accounts. And given bonds and REITs are not as tax efficient, if you you have them, prioritize placing them in tax advantage accounts. But let's say that you're still a bit confused by all these tax efficiency strategies. You know paying less in taxes is important to your investment growth, but you're not sure how to best approach it. Which is why I want to talk to you about Playbook, who is kindly sponsoring today's video. Playbook is a step-by-step -step app for growing your money the smart way. It uses state-of-art strategies to build out your financial plan, minimize your taxes, and maximize long-term investment returns. As I mentioned earlier, the government gives you many opportunities to grow your money and pay less in taxes through tax advantage accounts like 401ks, IRAs, and Roth IRAs. However, it could be a challenge to take full advantage of them because of nuanced tax codes as well as your unique situation. Well, Playbook can help you with that. When you open up an account with Playbook, once you input your financial data, it will automatically calculate your personalized optimal tax strategy, a strategy where you can take full advantage of all opportunities available to you to reduce your tax bill. If you want to take it up a notch, Playbook can even handle the contribution itself so you're putting away the right amount in the right places each year. And unlike high-priced financial advisors and investment fund managers who will charge you quite a bit for this advice, Playbook offers this tax optimization strategy for you starting at only $9 a month. They know how the process works, so they're able to leverage technology to bring you this service. So if you want to really maximize your tax savings and maximize your returns, check out Playbook today by going to my special link, helloplaybook.com slash takehim, or click on the link in the video description below. All right, with that said, let's go back to the video. Number three way to invest for maximum returns, avoid individual stocks. When we're faced with the crazy rise of companies like Nvidia, we can't help ourselves but think, man, only if I bought this stock early, 
Only if I bought it two years ago, I could be a millionaire today. However, be very careful with this line of thinking because it can rationalize very risky behaviors. To exemplify what I mean, let me share with you a short tale of two companies. Many, many years ago, there were these two companies. One, a fledgling startup called Netflix. Another, a big behemoth called Blockbusters. Blockbusters was one of the most profitable and popular video stores throughout the 90s and early 2000s. At its peak in 2004, it boasted 9,000 stores globally, 84,000 employees, and it earned $5.9 billion in revenue. At a similar time, Netflix, in contrast, had zero stores, only 260 employees, and it had a whopping revenue of negative $58 million. That's right, it was losing money. 20 years later, Netflix is valued at over $200 billion, and Blockbuster no longer exists. Actually, I take that back. They do exist. One store in Bend, Oregon. Now, we all like to think that we knew Netflix was going to be a spectacular success, and Blockbusters was going to fail miserably. However, if we're honest, if we were to go back to the early 2000s, could any of us have really predicted how things would have panned out today? The truth is that none of us can. Hindsight is 2020, but none of us can predict the future, no matter how much we like to believe we can. Thus, while the spectacular rise of companies like Nvidia is tempting, understand that we don't know what the future holds. Could it continue to rise to the moon and beyond? Possibly. Could another startup take over the lead in the next few years? As we saw in the example of Netflix and Blockbusters, that is a possibility. So what to do? Which leads to the next strategy. Number four way to invest for maximum returns, diversify. You don't need to have a magic ball to know what stocks will do well in the future in order to get a healthy return on your investment. Diversify as much as possible, and one of the simplest way to do this is to buy a broad market index fund. The main reason why index funds win in the long run is that it follows a predictable and automated set of rules when buying stocks. There is no highly paid fund manager trying to pick winning stocks. On any given day, there are literally thousands and hundreds of thousands of people arguing over the correct value of each stock. One might say Nvidia is the greatest thing since sliced bread, Someone else will say it's had its run. The stock will drop pretty soon. One of them might be right, someone else might be wrong, we really don't know. But what's great about buying an index fund is that it essentially represents the average performance of all these bickering. No one can predict a company's performance and therefore the market's performance. The only thing we can predict is that our index will represent the market's average performance as a whole. So if we want to effectively make money in the market, we can by picking the index fund with the broadest diversification. For example, tracking either the S&P 500 or the total market. If you want the specifics, here are some of my favorite broad market index funds. If you're invested with Vanguard, the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund, aka VTSAX. The Vanguard 500 Index Fund, aka VFIAX. If you're invested with Fidelity, the Fidelity Total Market Index Fund, aka FSKAX. The Fidelity 500 Index Fund, aka FXAIX. And if you're invested with Charles Schwab, Schwab S&P 500 Index Fund, SWPPX. Schwab Total Market Index Fund, SWTSX. When you invest in any of these funds, you're tapping into the growth of the stock market while at the same time protecting yourself from the risk of holding the next blockbusters. All right, you get it. Invest in a broad market index fund, but which one is the best? There's gotta be one that is better than all the other, right? Which leads to the next point. The number five way to invest for maximum returns. Do not chase returns. Let's take a look at two of the funds that I just covered. Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund, also known as VTSIX, which represents the total market. And the Vanguard 500 Index Fund, also known as VFIAX, which represents the S&P 500. The Vanguard website provides return data that goes back to the year 2000, but I want to go back a little further. The Center for Research and Security Price at the University of Chicago has gone back to 1926 and has actually calculated the returns earned by all US stocks since. Their data shows that the two indexes parallel each other with near precision. When you look at the chart here, comparing the total market versus the S&P 500 between 1926 and 2006, you can hardly tell them apart. According to this study, for the full period, the average annual return on the S&P 500 was 10.4%, while the return on the total stock market index was 10.2%. You might be saying at this point, all right, I got it, the S&P 500 is better. That is the best fund to put all my money in, right? But before you get too excited, let me share with you a few other interesting findings. When we compare the returns between 2000 to now, interestingly, the total market, VTSAX, has better returns than the S&P 500, VFIAX, 8.14% versus 7.88%. All right, you might be thinking about changing your mind. Maybe the total stock market is better. But wait, let me throw in another wrench in your decision. Take a look at the 10 year return. In that case, the S&P 500, the VFIX, has better returns at 2.66% versus VTSIX's 11.97%. Are you confused yet? 
This represents what's called a period-dependent outcome. Everything really depends on the starting and the ending date. The outcome really depends on what period you decide to look at. When you compare the past 20 years starting in 2000, yes, VTSIX had better returns because small cap and mid cap companies perform better. But if you change the starting line to 10 years ago, VFIX is better. The bottom line is this. The long-term correlation of the returns between two indexes is 0 0.99. One is perfect correlation. There really is little to choose between them, so be very careful not to chase returns. A quick reminder before we move on to the next reason. Make sure to download your free one-page PDF companion guide that goes along with this video. It has everything I'm covering in a simple to digest one-page format. So go to the link I'll have in the description below to download your free copy. Number six way to invest for maximum returns. In the line of not chasing returns, stop moving money around. When I talk to people about their investment portfolios, many of them ask if they should move their money from Charles Schwab to Vanguard or from Vanguard to Fidelity because they think there are better options there. The expense ratio is 0.01% cheaper. Financial Tortoise says Vanguard is best, so maybe I should move all my money there. I say if you already have your money invested in a good low cost broad market index fund, unless there is a really strong compelling reason to, most often, it's not necessary. When we allow ourselves to constantly move money around here and there, there could be some tiny financial gains from it, but we're ignoring the emotional and the time costs associated with it. Consider the time that you're spending comparing the returns on these funds, and the time that you're taking to actually open up the account with a new firm and to manage the process of moving your money. My personal take is that if your money is already invested in either the S&P 500 or the total market index fund, your time is best spent making more money and investing more into the market. That is how you will get maximum returns. Number seven way to invest for maximum returns. Reinvest all your dividends. A dividend is a reward, usually cash, that a company or a fund gives to shareholders on a per share basis. Many index funds pay dividends. It's not a lot, usually between 1-2%, to but it is something, and it can be tempting to pocket this money. I say resist the temptation. Reinvest dividends back into your portfolio, because in the long run, reinvesting your dividends can really pay off. For most index funds, when you initially set a purchase of securities, you'll be asked whether you want any dividends transferred to your settlement account, or reinvest it for more shares. Don't transfer it to your settlement account. Select reinvest to buy additional shares. This way, you have one less thing to do if you want to reinvest dividends. Your investment firm does this for you automatically. Two, you're also automatically buying shares on a regular basis. Dollar cost averaging in action. And three, you're supercharging your long-term returns through the power of compounding. You're continually adding more shares, which in turn will generate dividends of their own in the future. But don't just stop there. Number seven way to invest for maximum returns. Just keep buying. The path to wealth really begins with owning assets. More assets that you own, wealthier you will become because those assets will appreciate and produce income. So whatever it seems like the stock market is doing or not doing, just keep buying into the market. What I like to do is set up automatic contributions to all my investment accounts, to my retirement accounts, and to my brokerage accounts. Set amount, same time, every single month. It's tempting to look at the market and try to time our contributions. We can easily look at the market right now and say things like, oh, the market seems too hot right now. So I'm going to wait until it dies down before I buy. Or I think the market is at a dip right now. I don't want to lose my money as soon as I invest. So I'm going to wait until it feels like things are improving. But the truth is that we don't know if the market is up or down. It could be at the peak or it could be at the bottom. No one knows. So if you want to maximize your portfolio return, just keep buying. In the end, how your investment behave is much less important than how you behave. Number nine way to invest for maximum returns. Minimize investment expenses. Make sure that you're not paying more than you need to when it comes to expenses. I've seen a lot of investment portfolios. It's not uncommon to see people paying one, two, or three percent of their assets to advisory and fund management fees. If you don't know how much you're paying in expenses, let's do a quick exercise. Log into your 401k or your investment account right now. Find a fund that has a good chunk of your money and look for its expense ratio. If you're having a hard time finding it, just search expense ratio. Now, if the ratio is below 0.1%, I don't think that is too bad. However, anything more? I would question, what additional value are you getting? Especially given that most actively managed funds fail to beat the market anyways. Now, some people may think 1%, 2%, that doesn't sound like much. I don't mind paying a percent or two to get the best returns. And when we look at a portfolio of $10,000, one to 2% comes out to $100 to $200 annually. That doesn't sound like a lot, right? But let's compare that to the cost of investing in a simple low cost index fund. Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund, AKA VTSIX, has an expense ratio of 0.04%, which is effectively $4 for every $10,000 invested. Swap Total Market Index Fund, SWTSX, has an expense ratio of 0.03%, effectively $3 for every $10,000 invested. Fidelity Total Market Index Fund, FSKAX, has an expense ratio of 0.015%, effectively 
$1.50 for every $10,000. If you look at some of the ETF alternatives of the same fund, they come out even cheaper. And we're not even talking about the additional cost of higher expenses when we compound this over many years. Project out this cost every year for the next 10 to 20 years, and could be talking about thousands or if not tens of thousands of dollars. Or how about the hidden costs that many actively managed funds bake into their overall expenses? Commissions and bid ask spreads that come from higher turnover most actively managed funds have. Bottom line, when you can reduce your fees, it translates to direct boost investment returns. Number 10 way to invest for maximum returns. The final and probably the most important component to really maximize your investment returns. Wait. Give it time. Like an apple seed that you plant in the ground, if you want to one day eat that delicious fruit, you must give it time. Time for it to grow and time for it to bear fruit. To be honest, there are way too many talks about getting rich quickly all around us. That's the reason we constantly have these bubbles. The real estate bubble, the dot-com bubble, the tulip bubble. Just as building a great career or a healthy marriage takes time, successful investing requires time and patience. So once you plant your seeds, your money in the market, Take a big step back and wait. And don't measure your progress in months or years. I say measure it in decades. An apple tree starting from a seed will take approximately seven to 10 years before it bears its first fruit. In the same way, give your investment a decade before you even consider withdrawing from it. If you believe in the American economy and the American companies as a whole, and you're invested in a low cost, broad market index fund, there's a good chance you can make a lot of money in the market. Today, if you were to invest $100,000 in index fund with an average rate of return of 8%, and hold it for 30 years without ever touching it, you will eventually accumulate a portfolio of over $1 million. It's not sexy, it's not overnight, and this strategy won't get your face in the cover of the Forbes magazine, but it gets the job done, and that is what matters. Thank you guys for watching the theme of slow and steady. Check out this video where I talk about why you want to get rich slowly. Until next time, all the best.